this is what VPT uh, looks like when you open it up. It contains the main console, the navigator, the preview, and if you're not connected to a projector already, your output window will be hiding underneath the preview window. So let's very briefly go through the different sections uh, here. So in the main window you have the the tabs which lets you uh, access the different sections of uh, VPT. You have the preset section which is always visible where you store presets, basically save the the state of your current output, the layer settings, the sources settings, etc. And then at the bottom you have a more of a general control bar affecting preview window settings, navigator window settings, you can um, turn the output window to full screen, also using the escape short key as before, etc. The navigator window is basically associated with the active layer. Active layer is an important concept in VPT. It's basically the layer that you are currently working on, which you select either by the number keys 1 to 8 or using the up and down arrows or you can click directly onto one of these circles. The active layer is in the preview window indicated by a yellow frame and you can also see the the layer number inside the yellow frame. The preview window lets you um, manipulate the layer directly using your mouse either the positioning you can switch to um, scaling or you could uh, do the cursor or the corner pin settings and these things you can also actually do in the output window In the sources section you have uh, eight QuickTime sources. You turn on a QuickTime source by clicking on the label. You select a clip from the drop menu. And you can do more uh, control of the, the source in this section. You activate the source control by clicking on just before the label of which you see it ch changes to the right uh, source here. You have a solid layer, you have two live settings, the monitor for the live settings is here. You have a live capture and a buffer. You have two noise generators and if you're on the Mac you also have two Siphon clients so you can receive uh, image streams from other applications supporting the Siphon framework. The layers is basically a list of all the layers. Um, maybe not so uh, important as it was before because uh, now we have a more visual uh, feedback in the preview section. When a layer is turned on and you uh, get an indicator, this kind of more green background on the layer. You can also see when I turned on the or put a content into a uh, layer one, it's uh, switched to um, solid here and solid here. So you have several indicators of what is actually used as source for a layer. So in the navigator, you can also choose directly uh, which uh, layer you want to use. The queue list basically lets you uh, make transitions using uh, the presets here. Uh, I will not go into detail uh, here, but for instance, if I wanted to do a fade from uh, preset 14, 14 to 15 in 5 seconds, I would type something like this. F in getting a fade, 14 is the preset number, 15 is the other preset number, 5 is the time in seconds. 
the router is uh, quite as it was before. Uh, you um, it lets you route uh, control information from media control, LFOs, OSC, etc., and uh, map it to different parameters, basically. So, for instance, layer one fades. We have the mix section, which lets you mix different sources. We have the effects section, which lets you do some uh, effects on uh, a source and send it out again uh, to the layer. We have the draw module, which lets you draw inside the layer, which which could be useful for more complex masks. We have a text module. Here we have the MIDI module with uh, also the soft uh, sliders, which you can use inside VPT if you don't have access to a MIDI controller. We have the LFO section, which are basically oscillators, which lets you automate parameters. You can actually see something going on already when I just quickly turn it on now, since I, in the router section here, mapped controller 1 to the fade level of layer 1 and you can see the fade level is actually going up and down here and you could even see it on the active uh, on the output here we have uh, the OSC control settings here we have the options for um, hooking up to an Arduino for sensor input, uh, you can use uh, parameters inside VPT to trigger other events in VPT, like uh, loop points, end of uh, a fade, for instance, and these different things. The DMX module is uh, currently only working with the NTEC, NTEC uh, USB interface. Uh, but it lets you control uh, VPT from a light console and it also gives you possibility to send out uh, information uh, to DMX devices. The sound out section lets you route sound from your uh, QuickTime sources to uh, several channels basically, so you can work with multi-channel output. This just gives you uh, indication of uh, keyboard shortcuts. This is just general information on where you can find help and the preference sections which among other things lets you adjust render speed, preview speed, screen ratio, number of screens. If I switch to two screens you see the preview gets updated and you can also see an indicator of where the division between the two projectors are, which is quite useful. Also, uh, it might be very useful to work with a larger size uh, preview window when you're actually doing your mapping and you can adjust the size there. That means I can't see what I'm doing anymore, but let's switch back. At the top of the preferences you see an indication of which projects is the active project. As in uh, VPT5, uh, projects are organized in project folders. A project folder contains the default uh, video folder, the mask folder, as well as the presets, the preferences and the MIDI preferences. And here's also a uh, the text file for the queue list. I'm currently using the default uh, demo project which is inside the VPT folder where when you download a VPT. Uh, it is possible however to if you don't want to use the default location for instance for uh, for movies and you want to have uh, several different sources in the different movie sources, you can still drag and drop uh, your movie folders into the different movie sources. So I can now 
basically drag and drop it onto the menu list and you see it will be updated with the the videos contained inside this folder and this path will be saved with the presets when you save the presets there's a lot of uh, help built into VPT so I encourage you to look for the question marks inside the different sections so for instance in the navigator you have the information about the navigator interface as well as the the preview window if I click on the in the sources section you would get information about the source section if I go to the queue list you get information about the queue list etc 